Welcome to Vora Motors. Today, we'll be showing you how to replace your front and rear motors on the Cabo Wolf Warrior X GT. For these tasks, you'll need a 3, 4, and 5mm hex key, flathead screwdriver, 18mm wrench, 18mm socket wrench, pin removal tool, tire pump, and of course, your new replacement motor. To start, remove the silicone deck cover around the edges to get to the hex screws underneath. Take your 3mm hex key and remove the 9 screws. Then, remove the deck cover and weather stripping. We recommend that you take pictures of the connections before unplugging anything for reference later. For the front motor, disconnect the yellow, green, and blue phase cables. Also disconnect the 5-pin connector with red, yellow, green, blue, and black covered hall sensors. Next, use your pen removal tool to depen the hall sensors from the black connector. Save this 5-pin connector for later. Take your 3mm hex key and unscrew the 3 screws to take off the right front neck cover. Pull the motor cable out of the deck. Then cut off any zip ties and unravel the braid. Now that your motor cable is free, use your 5mm hex key to unscrew the 2 screws on the bracket surrounding the brake caliper. Keep track of the 2 screws and wire guard that will hold your motor wire in place. Next step is to take off the two nuts on either side of the tire. Due to the red Loctite holding the nut in place, it may be difficult to unscrew it first. If so, take a torch and heat up the nut for 30 to 45 seconds to loosen up the red Loctite. Brush off any excess Loctite after unscrewing the nut. Repeat the process on the other side. Remove the washer and take the tire off your scooter. Next, take the air out of the tire by pushing on the valve. Using a 4mm hex key, unscrew the six screws surrounding the motor. Be careful not to strip the screws as they will be very tight. Save the screws and remove the motor from the tire. Take your new motor and place it in the tire with the brake rotor facing up. Line up your screws and screw in the six screws with your 4mm hex key. Next, fill your tire with air. Take your motor lock washers and place them facing opposite directions on either side of the wheel. The inner lock washer should be facing down while the outer lock washer should be facing up so it fits into the little groove on the fork. Screw the nut on for now, and repeat the process on the other side. Now apply some red Loctite and screw it tight. Let the Loctite sit for one day so it can dry properly. Next, put the wire guard on the cable and line it up with the holes. Line the brake caliper up with the holes as well and screw it in place. Gently feed the phase wires and hall sensors into the deck. Using a blade, carefully flick up the flap on the hall sensor pins. Refer back to your reference photo and use the D-pinning tool to help you push the hall sensors into the 5-pin connector. Then connect the phase wires to the respective colors. Plug in the 5-pin connector. Now go ahead and test your front motor to make sure it's working properly. Then use the 3mm hex key to screw the front frame neck cover back into place. Wrap up the braid cover. Organize the cables neatly into the deck. Place on the weather stripping ensuring the screw holes are aligned. Replace the deck cover and screw in the 9 hex screws with your 3mm hex key. And now your front motor replacement is complete. For the rear motor, Follow the motor cable alongside the battery until you locate the phase wires and hall sensors. Go ahead and unplug them. Next, use your pen removal tool to depen the hall sensors from the black connector. Save this 5-pin connector for later. Now you can feed the motor cable out of the deck. Using your 5mm hex key, unscrew the two screws to take off the brake caliper. Keep track of the two screws and washers that connect to the caliper. Next step is to take off the two nuts on either side of the tire. Due to the red Loctite holding the nut in place, it may be difficult to unscrew it first. If so, take a torch and heat up the nut for 30 to 45 seconds to loosen up the red Loctite. Brush off any excess Loctite after unscrewing the nut. Repeat the process on the other side. Remove the washer and take the tire off your scooter. Next, take the air out of the tire by pushing on the valve. Using a 4mm hex key, unscrew the six screws surrounding the motor. Be careful not to strip the screws as they will be very tight. Save the screws and remove the motor from the tire. Take your new motor and place it in the tire with the brake rotor facing up. Line up your screws and screw in the six screws with your 4mm hex key. Next, fill your tire with air. Take your motor lock washers and place them facing opposite directions on either side of the wheel. The inner lock washer should be facing down while the outer lock washer should be facing up so it fits into the little groove on the fork. Screw the nut on for now and repeat the process on the other side. Now apply some red Loctite and screw it tight. Let the Loctite sit for one day so it can dry properly. Make sure that the motor cable sits on the grooves inside the arm. Then feed the cable into the deck. Push in the dust cover to stop the elements from getting into your deck. 
Using a blade, carefully flick up the flap on the hall sensor pins. Refer back to your reference photo and use the D-pinning tool to help you push the hall sensors into the 5-pin connector. Then connect the phase wires to their respective colors. Plug in the 5-pin connector. Place the motor cable neatly alongside the battery. Now test the rear motor to make sure everything is working properly. Next, screw the brake caliper back into place and align it with the rotor. Power on your scooter and test anything else you can think of to ensure your Wolf Warrior XGT is running smoothly. Organize the cables neatly into the deck. Place on the weather stripping ensuring the screw holes are aligned. Replace the deck cover and screw in the 9 hex screws with your 3 mm hex key. And that's it! Thanks for watching! Check out more videos on our channel and visit our website at voramotors.com.